Hello and good morning friends. Today I want to talk to you about a story about this customer and their well. Oh, where they put it was wild. Let's get into it. So this goes back quite a while, but this particular client was trying to purchase a home. Now in this part of town, these houses were generally built in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So they're pretty old, right? There's not a whole lot to them and the rules were different back in the day. Now, when we got there, his main concern was, where's the well? What's it yielding? What's the equipment look like? And then what's it like? What's the bacteria like? Is it safe to drink? So we get to this property, old school house, basically in this particular area, how they would build these homes. They were really skinny and long rectangular homes. Not sure why they did that, but even the lots were built that same way. Basically it's one main road, cornfields to the left, cornfields to the right, there's maybe 30 or 40 houses. So there's nothing super crazy going on there, but it's not a huge, huge area, right? Now, this particular property was not in the greatest of shape. Like it definitely needed some love and it doesn't look like anybody had touched anything since the 80s, which is better than I guess the 1800s, right? So we, we go downstairs, we take a look at the pressure tank and all the water treatment. There's wires hanging everywhere. The pressure tanks from 1990. The water treatment has not like nothing in it. The filter's clogged up. It's literally like just a solid chunk of, of dirt inside of that filter, right? Uh, they've got everything plumbed in all different types of directions. They got shark bite into PEX, into copper, into CPVC, back into PEX. And it's like, what is going on here, right? So we take our water samples. As soon as we turn on the sink, the uh, water is brown like super brown now generally brown water in our area is going to be iron easy enough to fix but kind of unsettling to this particular client is at, at first glance right so when we're when we're walking around what we're trying to do is figure out okay so all of the well equipment is in the basement on the left that means the well ought to be somewhere to the left of the house so we can we carry on we go back outside we start running the hose to see does the mechanics work how's the cycle length and all uh we go outside and we start looking for the well we're looking we're looking we're not having any luck until eventually i come across a very large uh cement block essentially right so we pop that open and it's a hand dug well we go back inside to the basement and we see oh hey look there's an old water line that's cut so they had an old hand dug well, there was no pump in it. So that was the first you know, sign that, hmm, maybe, maybe this is no longer in use. So we go inside, we see that the hand dug well was gone. Uh, they're not using it. So now we gotta try and figure out, well, where's the other well? So I grab the good old metal detector, start looking around to see if I can get lucky. And lo and behold, I find it underneath of the uh, driveway. Sorry about that. I had to answer a phone call and handle a few things, but we're back in it. So. I find it the, uh, using the metal detector, I find the well is underneath the driveway, right? So my first thing is, well, that's a really, really bad spot for it. Where, why would you possibly put it underneath the driveway? Well, what happened was in the eighties when they had renovated the home, obviously we figured that out because now we started talking to the county, they had, uh, abandoned the hand dug well, which they didn't, right? They just left it sitting there and then they drilled a new well. Now, when they drilled this well, they had it, at least per the record, extending about eight inches up above the surface. But I guess because of where it was, the previous owner decided that they wanted to lop it down and put some gravel over top of it. So when we popped, when we found it, basically we kind of shoved some of the gravel out of the way and we saw that they had a little, you know, normal one inch thick paver, 12 by 12, normal kind of paver stone like you'd see in a garden, sitting on top of the lid and you pull that stone off and you see your six inch pipe all the way down, the wires, et cetera. There is no lid whatsoever on this well. So obviously this is a problem. And you might be thinking, well, what could possibly be wrong with that, right? Beyond the you know mechanical situation or the safety situation. The concern is that there's nothing to prevent groundwater, engine oil, rocks, debris, any of that stuff getting into your well. There's nothing to prevent stuff from going in. Now that makes it to where you could potentially get sick, right? If you're not protecting your well, if you're not testing your well, you're probably not gonna be doing super hot, right? So this particular uh, property, obviously we're testing for the water, so we're gonna see what we get in a little bit. 
but when we're when we're going it's gonna when we're going uh through this process it's kind of one of those things where if you don't know what you're looking for or if you've not seen it before it can be kind of tricky right so in this particular circumstance the well was underneath the driveway we start to pump it as as we're having the pump run we're seeing that it's just spewing out a ton of brown water that's probably why the filter was clogged right it was just gnarly gnarly water and then about 16 20 minutes into it water stops uh-oh now what so whenever that happens that means the water levels hit the pump intake and so the process that we do next is what's called a dump and film right we, we turn the power off we start a stopwatch we wait an arbitrary amount of time and after about eight minutes turn the pump back on leave the stopwatch running and we keep filling buckets until eventually it stops again from that point we're able to calculate what is the output of this particular well so we do that for a little while and we come to a result of about a half a gallon a minute it's not that much water that's very very little water not really much you could uh run your family on especially if it only ran for about 20 minutes <sighs> you know you'd have to kind of space out those showers car washes etc right otherwise you're gonna run into some problems of not having water in your well so first off we've got a lot of issues in the house we've got a lot of issues with water treatment and the wells underneath the driveway and now it doesn't yield so now the client's concerned about like well what do i do and in this situation it's kind of a, a preference thing but there's there's a few things he can do right the biggest thing is really drill a new well now the problem with drilling a new well is that lot like i said they're real skinny rectangular lots the septic ate up just about the entire lot so the only space that was available was going to be in the front yard which is next to a road now that has its own set of implications and problems right and the problem with putting a well next to the road is now you have to worry about road salts any kinds of like oils any of the pitch or tar however they put asphalt down getting into your well generally in our area it's chlorides those salts will get in there they'll chew up your water heater they'll chew up any metal fitting or any metal pipe in your home right getting that salt out of your water kind of really sucks and is really hard so now we got to sit here and we got to figure out can we redevelop this well and so i'm not a huge fan of trying to hydrofrack but i do think that in this particular particular circumstance that hydrofracking probably is the better option because he doesn't have a whole lot of space so what this guy ended up doing was he built up the well back to its its correct space put the little balusters around it so nobody backed into it and then he hydrofracked the well after he hydrofracked it they got rid of all the water they pumped in and then that well was able to yield 1.2 gallons per minute they went ahead and they also put storage in the basement. So they put about 600 gallons of storage. And so that 1.2 gallon per minute well just slowly fills up that storage tank and then he's good to go. So the, the lesson behind this is just because you have a well that's messed up, ugly, doesn't look like it's working or sloppily put together, doesn't mean you can't fix it and put it back together. It just kind of depends on how much time and energy you want to spend in fixing it and getting it put back together. This particular property was nice. It had a beautiful view. Uh, once he had a gorgeous plan for how he was going to fix up the property, like the house structure itself to make it hit whatever he wanted, it was going to be a really cool bachelor pad and he was really interested in it. So he made it work. If you have a well of similar issues, if you're running into the same kind of problems, you too can probably make it work in your, in your home, right? Now it's very important that if you're trying to figure this stuff out, that you contact a licensed professional who knows what they're doing. They're able to walk you through how the process works, what to look for, what your options are. So that way, at least you're able to figure out what, what to do when something goes wrong. Not always is the well yield going to have problems. Not always is the well going to have problems. Not always is the bacteria going to have problems, but every now and again, you're going to find one that's not, not working so well. It's important to know what to do. I hope that you found this interesting. Please leave a comment below. Tell me, have you ever had to go about dealing with something like this on your well? Maybe it was during a transaction. Maybe, sometimes, at least in our area, if you're pulling a permit to build on your property, they'll make you test the well. Have you ever had to do it for that, right? Or were you just curious to see what your well is doing after? It's been 30 years and I don't know, let's see what happens. And maybe you found a problem. Let me know below, I'm very curious. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button, hit subscribe. Till next time, guys.